So this video is going to deal with alkane stereochemistry and uh, later we're going to talk about Newman projections and even the chair conformations which will be in a separate video. Um, so when we talk about alkanes you know we're talking about atoms with no carbon-carbon double bonds only carbon-carbon single bonds and this is the simplest alkene or alkane uh, ethane. Right? The reason that alkanes can undergo different con uh, uh, be in different conformations is simply because around this carbon carbon bond you can have rotation. Uh, now we I'll have the word here free rotation in quotes it's actually not free. So let's look at an example of how we can rotate around this bond. So here you can see that I can rotate around that carbon. Let's look at it again and you can see that that front carbon is rotating while the back carbon is not. So with alkanes we're able to draw what we call Newman projections and that's just a depiction of an alkane uh, based on looking down a carbon-carbon bond. So let's say we take these two carbons and we look down this bond. If we rotated this around uh, we'll be able to look down the bond and let's see what that looks like in 3D. So you can see as we rotate this around looking down the bond just means looking at the molecule from the front right so this is one carbon and the back carbon is the second carbon and this is what we call a Newman projection although we say that there's free rotation around the carbon carbon single bond in actuality there's some strain involved in rotating around that bond um, there's two types of strain that we're going to talk about one is torsional strain that's just the strain of hydrogens passing one another which I'll show you in 3D and then that steric strain when the groups get a little bit bigger then those groups start interacting with one another and they don't like being close to one another so that causes what we call a steric interaction right so when you have this type of strain it causes energy differences between the conformations so let's look at some conformations real, real quick notice the hydrogens passing one another that costs energy that energy is expressed on what we call a potential energy surface which you see to the right. The highest peaks are high energy, the lowest peaks are low energy and as I go up in energy notice the angle between the hydrogens is decreasing called the dihedral angle, the angle between those two hydrogens and then as I go at the highest point you see everything is eclipsed and then when I go down as I'm decreasing in energy what you'll notice is that the angle between the two hydrogens is increasing. That's again the dihedral angle. That's the angle between those two hydrogens on the front carbon as well as on the back carbon. So we've already seen for ethane um, we can uh, have a Newman projection but these are just some depictions of ethane. Of course this is the line structure. This is what we call the sawhorse that would be if we took the line structure and slightly turned it on an angle so that we could see both carbons from the side and then this would be again the Newman projection where the front carbon and the back carbon are directly in front of one another and we've already seen how to actually do that. Alright so we talked about these energies and the conformations this when all of the hydrogens are here and the dihedral angle is 60 degrees uh, between this hydrogen and this hydrogen one on the front one on the back we call that the staggered conformation that's our uh, lowest energy conformation um, for any of these conformations that we're going to look at. Staggered is always the lowest energy. All right, and then we look over here at the eclipse conformation. Notice every hydrogen is overlapping. That costs energy. Each hydrogen-hydrogen uh, hydrogen overlap costs four kilojoules per mole. So that's uh, four here, four for this, and four for this one which gives me a total of 12 kilojoules per mole for this particular molecule. Propane, we're going to talk about propane and butane in addition to ethane. So this is propane, just a three carbon chain. And if we look down this, these two carbons, again, we can draw a Newman projection for propane that looks like this. This is the sawhorse. This is the Newman projection where I have taken propane and rotated it around so that I'm looking down uh, these two carbons. The red carbon would be here in the front and then the blue carbon would be the CH3 in the back. So let's look at a 3D depiction of propane so we can see uh, the different dihedral angles and the rotation. 
So here is propane from a side view. Let's turn it around and let's take propane. This is now the Newman projection where the two front and back carbons are in front of one another. Let's take propane and rotate around that carbon carbon bond, which we'll see now. And again, every time those atoms pass one another, it costs energy. So as I go up in energy, you'll see that that methyl and that hydrogen, the angle between them is decreasing. Right now they're eclipsing. That costs energy. That costs about six kilojoules per mole. If I go down in the valley again, that's staggered back to a high energy point that's eclipsing, and then back down into the valley again, it'll be staggered again, and then eclipsing again. So you'll notice that this thing oscillates between conformations. So here's propane again. If it's in staggered, then that's the lowest energy conformation. Um, if it's eclipsing. This is the highest energy conformation for this molecule because it has a methyl hydrogen eclipsing interaction here and that costs six kilojoules per mole. And remember the other uh, hydrogen, hydrogen overlap costs four kilojoules per mole per each overlap. So that's four, eight and six for a total of 14 kilojoules per mole total energy for this molecule. So the last alkane that we're going to talk about as it relates to alkane stereochemistry is butane. Uh, that's a four carbon chain. Here's the, the uh, skeletal structure for it, a line structure for it. Uh, here's the sawhorse. And then here is the Newman projection where again, I'm looking down the carbon carbon bond between these two carbons and I'm turning it facing me so that one carbon is uh, facing me and the other carbon is directly behind it. Um, so let's look at this in 3D and let's go through the energetics. So here is butane. Let's look down the red and blue carbon to figure out the Newman projection. So as we turn it, this is what we call anti-conformation, where the two methyl groups are uh, 180 degrees to one another. All right, it's the most stable. And as we rotate around the carbon-carbon bond, you'll see that costs energy. The lowest energy conformation is anti and then here we have methyl hydrogen eclipsing and then this is the gauche conformation uh, where the two methyls are 60 degrees to one another and then this is going to be your highest energy conformation where the two methyls are eclipsing one another that's a steric interaction and it costs about 11 kilojoules per mole in energy it's very bad interaction and let's look at that in a little bit more detail okay so for butane i'm just going to pull out the really important conformations again this is the anti-conformation where the two methyl groups are 180 degrees to one another um, this is the lowest energy conformation for butane this is just a side view of it and you can see that the two methyl groups are anti or on opposite sides to one another of one another uh, if we look here this is a staggered but we call it, it has a special name we call it gauche where the two CH3 groups or two methyl groups are um, 60 degrees to one another again the angle between these two and this blue space here is 60 degrees this is lower in energy it costs about 3.8 kilojoules per mole and then over here we have the methyl methyl eclipsing interaction this is the side view this costs 11 kilojoules per mole so here is a pop quiz can you calculate the energies for this methyl methyl eclipsing confirmation so this highest energy confirmation can you calculate that I'll take that um, on actually on Wednesday, give you a chance to think about it and give us a chance to talk about it some more. All right. Peace. As always, if you have any questions, you can tweet, you can email or you can drop by my office.